In this lecture, we'll talk about transport proteins. So what are transport proteins? Transport proteins help in the transport of solutes across the membrane. So these are transmembrane proteins containing multiple membrane spanning segments which are generally alpha helices. Transport protein facilitate the movement of hydrophilic molecules through the hydrophobic plasma membrane. Now a hydrophilic molecule cannot really pass up plasma membrane because the internal part of that is hydrophobic. So they, they, thereby it creates a tunnel or passageway to bypass that hydrophobic core and this is how it transport solutes across the membrane. In this video, we will talk about different types of transport proteins. We would learn about their classification. So transport protein can be subdivided into groups like carriers, channels, ATP powered pumps, etc. Among carriers, you can find uh, co-transporters and uniporters. By the way, ATP powered pumps are those ones which require ATP hydrolysis for transport of ion in different directions. Now in case of co-transporters or uniporters, ATP is not required. But in uniporters what happens is there is uniform direction of um, basically movement of a molecule. It's important to note it's a molecule. One molecule is moving across the membrane via this particular via this particular carrier protein. Now, in case of co-transporter, there are movement of one, I mean more than one molecule, actually two molecules. So that is why it's a co-transport. Two things are transported together. So among the co-transporters, there are symporters where the direction of transport is similar. Both are coming inside or both are going outside. Or antiporter where uh, one molecule is moving outside, another molecule is coming inside. So these are antiporters. Now let's talk about channels. Among channels there are leaky channels which are transiently open kind of all the time. So ions can literally leak through them. These channels are present in neurons. Anyway, gated channels are pretty common in nervous system. Gated channels include ligand gated channels, which opens only when a ligand binds. So that's the password. And there are also voltage gated channel, which opens when a certain voltage is attained. So again, voltage here or voltage sensitivity here is the password that di directs the transport across the membrane. So this is the overall classification. Now we are going to go into details and look at each category. First, we are talking about uniporter. So in context of uniport or uniporter, we are going to take the example of GLUT1, which helps in glucose entry into the red blood cells. So these uniporter molecule kind of look like this. So glucose bind to the GLUT1 transporter on the extracellular side on the RBC membrane. And this binding triggers a conformational change. And that changes opens up the transporter in the cytosolic side and it leads to the uh, passage of glucose inside the RBC. So this is basically unified direction transport of one molecule that is glucose through the RBC membrane and that's why it's uniport. Okay, now let's talk about symporters which, uh, which fall under the category of co-transport proteins. So symporters can be found many places. One of that is basically intestinal lumen. Again, we are going to talk about the transport of glucose, which is coupled with the transport of sodium ions. And this is happening in the intestinal cells. So we are zooming into the intestinal cell and we would see there are co-transporter like this. So in the extracellular side, both uh, glucose and sodium binds to the particular carrier protein. And eventually what happens is there is a conformational change. This binding triggers the conformational change which, which allow the sodium and glucose both to be released inside the cell. So see both the direction of transport is similar. So that is why this is known as symporter or symport. Next we will talk about antiporter. Here the direction of transport is opposite. And this kind of example can be found in cardiac muscles and sodium calcium exchanger is an example of that. So on the cardiac muscle, here is the sodium calcium exchanger. 
Here what happens is the sodium ions bind to the exchanger on the extracellular side while calcium ion binds to the exchanger from the intracellular side. So both of these ions are bound from a different uh, side of the membrane. Sodium comes in whereas calcium moves out and this is triggered by a conformational change at the protein level. Now let's talk about gated channels. Gated channels are divided into two groups, ligand gated or voltage gated. First we'll talk about the ligand gated. So ligand is the password for movement of ions. So ligand gated channels are also known as ionotropic receptors. And these are made up of three, four or even five protein subunits that you can see in this particular diagram. Here is a ligand binding site. So this pink ligand binds to it. This makes the conformation uh, such that a particular ion can move through the membrane uh, pore. So here we can see there are two conformations. When he, one is ligand unbound. At this point, the channel is not conducting because the gate of the channel is closed. Whereas in the ligand bound situation, the gate of the channel is open and the ion transport can happen. So just to get a quick view, so here is a situation where the ligand is absent, the gate is closed, ions cannot pass through the channel. Here the ligand binds, the gate opens and now the ion can pass through the pores. This is how ligand gated channels operate. Where can we find ligand gated channels? <coughs> ligand gated channels can be found in central nervous system. If we zoom into a synapse, we can see tons and tons of these ligand gated ion channel in the post synapse. So in the post synaptic membrane, these ligand gated ion channels are present. Many of them conduct the nerve impulse from the presynapse to post synapse. And that's why they are super important. They can be found in neuromuscular junction, even in the stomach lining in the parietal cells. So here we are looking at a glutamatergic synapse where the action potential comes from the presynaptic terminal releases neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is the ligand here that binds to the uh, ligand gated ion channel present in the postsynapse. That opens up the channel, allows cation to flow. This cation influx lead to the membrane to become positive and that starts the wave of depolarization in the next neuron. There are examples of these kind of ligand gated ion channel in context of nervous system. For example, you would have ligand gated glutamate uh, receptors which are ionotropic receptors. You can also have ionotropic GABA receptors which uh, transports chloride across them and GABA needs to bind to these channel in order for chloride to be transported. Now we are moving towards voltage gated ion channel. This voltage gated ion channel as the name suggests they are gated by voltage. So voltage gating component has to be encoded into the protein structure. Most often what happens is these these particular proteins has a voltage sensor domain and this voltage sensor domain has different kind of charged residue. In this case, we are looking at a potassium channel which is voltage gated and most of the charged residues are actually positively charged. So there are other selectivity filters which help uh, to determine which type of ion would be passed through this channel. So here we can see the structure in real time and basically there is a pore forming domain, there is a selectivity filter, there are voltage sensor domains. So voltage sensor domains are the characteristic of these kind of voltage gated ion channels. So selectivity filter determines whether a potassium ion would pass or a sodium ion would pass. The ionic interactions that would happen with these ions would determine how and when which type of ion would pass. So in this case a closed state we can see a pore of the voltage gated potassium channel is closed and now we are looking at it in an open state. So what happens, notice the voltage sensor domain. The voltage sensor domain is kind of pushed upwards and this is happening because there is a change in the internal membrane charge that is kind of pushing these domains away. So let us look at the uh, recording data to understand the current versus voltage characteristics of these voltage gated potassium channel. So at negative voltage, they are not conducting. But at a positive voltage, they start conducting. You can see the conductance at that particular point of time. So what might have happened? In the negative voltage, since the membrane is more and more negative, it is kind of attracting those voltage sensor domain towards the cytosol. That's why the pore remains closed. But look at 
the positive voltage at this point the membrane inside is positive so it is repelling the voltage sensor domain outward which opens up the pore and allow the ion to pass through this is how the voltage sensor domain in the voltage gated ion channel works if you want to know more about voltage gated potassium channels or sodium channels you can click on the video in the i button there are detailed videos on that anyway now we are talking about the last category the atp powered pumps again we are just going to take one example of atp powered pumps if you need more details on atp power pumps you can find it in the i button so we are talking about sodium potassium atpas which maintains the electrochemical gradient of sodium and potassium across the cell membrane it is crucial for cell volume nerve impulse transmission muscle contraction and it has alpha chain which holds the sodium and potassium binding subunit along with atp and the beta subunit is kind of like a transmembrane domain that stabilizes the structure three sodium can bind and it can be transported outward two potassium can come in through this channel provided there is atp hydrolysis atp hydrolysis fuels this pump so this atp hydrolysis gives enough power such that the ionic movement can happen against the concentration gradient now here every green dot is a sodium ion and every red dot is a potassium ion look at the action in details so first three sodium ions bind to the cytosolic part of the pump atp gets hydrolyzed the pump gets phosphorylated uh, phosphorylated eventually there is this phosphorylation which triggers a conformational change this conformational change allows sodium ions to move out on the simultaneous uh, situ uh, situation you can see the potassium ion from the extracellular side started binding to the um, pores there now these uh, potassium ion binding triggers second conformational change the second conformational change is also triggered by the phosphate group that is now removed from the uh, channel so this releases the uh, phosphate group and change the conformation such that the potassium ion can now be released into the cytosolic site now the pump would eventually return to its original configuration to operate again this kind of pump can be found in many places such as plasma membrane of neurons which maintain the restricting membrane potential also it can be found in cardiac membranes uh, and and other places so overall in this video just to summarize we looked at transport proteins we looked at three categories carrier channels and atp powered pumps we looked at how atp power pump work we looked at how co transporter and unit transporters are different from each other in that context we further delve into the details of symport and antiport we looked at channel and among that there are leaky channels there are voltage gated channels among voltage there there are gated channels where we looked at ligand gated and voltage gated channel we looked at their operation regime in bit more details so i hope this is a nice summary of this entire topic if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe we can you can get our notes and flashcards in our facebook and instagram page also in our website all the links are provided in the description you can tell your friends about our channel because these are detailed lectures that would help you to revise within minutes Please support our channel using super thanks. Your small contribution like $2 would, would be our motivation. It would motivate us to make more such contents in the near future. See you in next video.